Good evening, friends, and welcome to Central's Evening Devotional Live from the Page Family Art Room once again, also known as the only quiet place in our house at the moment. Stop for just a moment tonight and imagine with me that wherever you are, your kitchen, your study, a quiet space in your basement, that suddenly, tonight, Jesus Christ himself appears in the room with you. Not a ghost, not a hologram, the real physical Jesus appears out of thin air with you. It's pretty crazy to imagine, right? Well, that's exactly what Jesus made a habit of doing after he was crucified and died. The Bible records several of these occurrences in fairly vivid detail. These accounts are fascinating to read about, and they bring us face to face with the core truth, not just of the Bible, but of history itself. Jesus Christ, who died by crucifixion at the hand of the Roman Empire, came back to life. And he appeared to numerous people on multiple different occasions. This evening, I want to invite you to read with me one such story as told in the first chapter of the book of Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into the heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So here are the apostles, the closest followers of Jesus, huddled together when Jesus the risen in the flesh Jesus, who just a short time before was dead in a tomb, he appears again to them. And I find their question that they asked Jesus to be a little bit perplexing. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Really? I, these guys believe that Jesus was the son of God and they now see him raised from the dead. And this is what they're worried about. They are asking Jesus about the restoration of an earthly kingdom to what they think it should be. Well, if I sit with these verses a little while longer and walk in the shoes of the apostles, the question is maybe not as perplexing as it initially seems. The more I reflect on it, frankly, the, the more relatable the apostles become to me. Because no matter who we are, we all have kingdoms in our lives that we want to see restored. They might not be kingdoms in the literal sense like Israel, but they're important facets of our lives that we yearn to see restoration for. If Jesus were here with me tonight, if he just appeared here, I know I'd be tempted to ask him things about my life that I want to see restored, my own kingdoms, so to speak. One example, a significant one, is for Deb and I, my wife. Uh, we, we lost our third child while Deb was still carrying her. Our daughter, Riley, is someone that we never had a chance to hold. And if Jesus were here tonight, I'd want to ask Jesus when we were going to be restored to her. Our youngest child, Jonah, he is a sweet, amazing little guy, but he has some significant challenges. Um, and he's making a ton of progress, but life is probably going to be pretty tough for him. Our hearts ache for him, and we yearn for restoration for him. And if Jesus were here tonight, I'd want to ask him when that was going to happen. When, Jesus, are you going to restore little Jonah to full health? When are you going to relieve him of the things that make life so hard for him? And I know you have your challenges too, friends. Every one of us is profoundly impacted by the effects of sin and death in this world. And you're not wrong to yearn for restoration, nor are you alone in crying out for it. I want you to know tonight that Jesus hears our cry. But I'm kind of thankful that Jesus doesn't answer the apostles' question in this account from Acts tonight. Instead of giving them an answer to relieve their anxiety, he redirects them. And I think he's redirecting us too. It's as if Jesus is saying to us, I know you're worried, but trust me, I've got this. Now go, be my witnesses. You see, Jesus doesn't give us an answer. He changes our focus. He lovingly shifts our focus away from the problems of the here and now and onto the reality that he has risen from the dead and he's invited us to be part of building his eternal kingdom by being his witnesses. As we wait on him to return and to finally restore all things, he invites us to share this good news and to be his witnesses to it. 
Friends, the world needs this good news right now. If the coronavirus has taught us nothing else, it has shown us the folly of thinking too much of the kingdoms of the here and now. Don't get me wrong. It's good and right for us to yearn for stability to be restored right now. But if stability comes and we don't have Jesus, what do we really have? Friends, tonight I think Jesus is calling us yet again to the important work of being his witnesses to a world that is desperate for only what he can give. Freedom from sin, death, and the fleeting nature of our earthly kingdoms. If you know that hope tonight, Jesus is calling you to be his witness and to share that hope with the people around you. If you don't know that hope tonight, but if you want to, reach out to me or reach out to someone at our church. You'll see on our website at the end of this video a way to contact us. Don't let another day go by without laying hold of this Jesus who has come to save you.